Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another Kickstarter critique where I take a look at a different Kickstarter tabletop game project every weekday at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, excuse me. Give my honest thoughts on how that's being ran. Quick show note, tomorrow there will be no show. I'm going to be out of town with my son. We're going to a Broncos game this weekend. But right now, I'm very excited to be checking out the 72nd, the 74th, excuse me, most popular project on all of tabletop games. That is Formula One Twenty, uh, so Formula Twenty One GP, brand new car driven racing game with modern Formula cars and hybrid dot dot dot, brand new car driven racing game. So I feel like this is a wasted sentence right here. I can very clearly tell all of that. I can infer all that. But you know what I can infer? The player count, the age, the time length. Does this play solo? Can I do this cooperative? Is it co like what I need? I would love to know more about the game than what you're telling me. Uh, with modern formula cars, I can tell that from the box. Now, I can barely kind of see the box in this image, and I'm sure it's going to look better when I zoom in on it, but I can tell, like, those things I can infer. I think you should tell some more useful information in this main image. That being said, you know, it looks cool. They have the big open shot, which normally I think looks a little bit cluttered, but I think this time they're really trying to give you a sense of how large the track is, and I think it looks good. I think overall it's a good image, but I would mention those things. So... Uh, and hybrid technology on fully customizable racetracks. Let's go. Cool. 470 backers. It's asking for $90,000. Wow. That is a very large funding goal. Um, it, it just it strikes me because typically if you see a project with $48,000 and it's not a minis game, you're like, okay, they're probably funded. Uh, they're barely halfway. So that's interesting. I think that might be one of the biggest reasons, obviously, why they're not funded. Well, that's like, duh, of course, they don't have the money, then that's the biggest reason. But I'm just saying, like, that's a large goal. Uh, hopefully they convince me in this video. But as always, when I go to the video, I'm thinking three things. Do I want it? Can you do it? How much is it? Let's go. Headphones. You also should always wear the headphones. Oh my gosh, I'm such a noob sometimes. Cool logo. I like this, but at the same time, I don't like this. I'd like to see maybe a little bit more of what's going on on the board. Just a little bit slower on the board. Uh, but I'm not against this kind of pizzazz. Welcome all racing and board games fans around the globe. We are really happy to have you with us where we can continue this project together. We put a lot of effort to be where we are now and to present this exciting racing project to the Kickstarter community. Our aim is to give you the most immersive and complete racing experience on the board. In Formula 21 GP board game, you will drive the modern Formula car. You will compete on the most famous racetracks in the world where you can manage the speed, control the tire wear, charge energy recovery system and use it for the attack or defense. You will control the risk level to get the most out of your car. You need to plan your tire strategy to enter. Now, one thing I would mention there is I would love it as, if as, as you were saying those things to me that I can do in this game, if you were showing me the board then like oh you can do this and then i can see this token moving from this track be like okay so there's a track for this and then you can do this you can use this for the tax um little things like that i think uh would just help me see it a little bit better Turn the pit lane in the right moment you will face unexpected great table appeal here and i do like the fact they're really showcasing the table appeal here and i think they're hitting the racing game crowd really hard right now uh because there's two very distinct crowds potentially interested in this as i'm seeing at least which is board game fans as, as he mentioned actually in the video and racing games fans and i think race as a racing game fan i think you're intrigued here i think you're very intrigued i think they're doing a great job there events like yellow flags safety cars weather changes and many more and that's i like how they did that they he said the same things as they were moving those on the board and i had like oh cool there's the track and the most important you will fight on the track with your opponents now here's one more thing 
Uh, I can completely understand every word you've said, but I would still have subtitles. I, I just love subtitles, period. Um, something to consider. Because I can understand everything, but it's like the kind where it's like, yeah, I can understand it, but maybe some people can't. You know what I mean? It was our big dream to have a board game set in the racing world. We wanted to give you the most complete racing game in which you will experience all elements from the pinnacle of the motorsport. It wasn't easy as we faced a lot of challenges in the design process to keep the proper balance between the simulation and the enjoyable gameplay. And now it's time to involve you in the project and that so that I feel like that was kind of aimed at the gamer aspect of it. Like, hey, it's totally in depth, but it's not super in depth. Like, you, you're still having fun, and we had to we had to meet in the middle somewhere. I, I kind of like to mention that, I guess. That's why we are here on the Kickstarter to bring this game to life and extend the content together. We are open for inputs and suggestions. To I think that says ages seven plus and two to six or two to eight players. And if that's the case, then yeah, I think that needs to be on the marquee on your main image. Um, because that tells me family weight, large group, you know, I start thinking maybe like downforce formula D, you know, I'm getting some of these games into my mind. So I would spot like that to make the best possible version of this racing board game. Join us into this exciting Kickstarter race and reach the finish line together with successful campaign. Back for 21 GP now and become the best racing driver in the world. Little wait, 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 wait. A little heavy-handed there at the end, but whatever. Didn't we go for, so we went from seven plus <clears throat> to nine plus, and from two, I think that's a two. I don't know. Anyhow, so age is nine plus. I still get the family game vibe. Which is good. And I love that box. Very colorful box. I like it. Okay, I thought that was a well done video. <clears throat> I think there could have been some things that could have been done to make maybe showcase spotlights and things a little bit better. But other than that, I thought that was serviceable. I didn't think it was too long. I didn't think they went too in depth on the rules. So, first graded, zero backed. I always say this. See when people say, why does it matter? I need to do a poll on it. First, when you have a first grade zero backed, it just makes it look like you're there, cash grab, you know, just like, oh, here, give us the money. You don't look like an active, engaged member of the community. Which, it, whereas if you go and you spend like the next 10 minutes, you back 50 projects for each for a dollar piece. And if you don't want to pay 50 bucks, you go back 50 projects, they're going to fail for a dollar piece. It says first grade 50 back. And they're like, oh, wow, it's a member of the community. I think little things like that, like little things like that can just tip the scales ever so slightly. It doesn't completely make or break the deal, but I think it just makes you look better. We are a Polish board game publisher. We create original games for you and ourselves. Join us and be engaged offline. That's their slogan. They take to the Facebook, take to the Instagram. Okie dokies. See what we got. How's it look? 1,100 people. Nice. That's a good chunk. That means they're doing a lot of stuff on the front end. I love seeing that. Creating a Facebook group and getting that big. That's work. Hi. It looked like they added solo play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was noticing that as well because I thought it was too. So now it's one to six. But still, here's the thing. I think one to six, I don't like this as the, what? what is it? So it's 45 to 115 minutes. I think that's what it says. I get you're trying to make it thematic, and that's cool. Maybe just make this a tiny bit smaller and also put 45 to 90 under there. I just, maybe, something to think about. Let me know what you think about that. So one to six players, ages nine plus. And yeah, I would mention those right from the beginning. Those, those are, that's a very appealing. Two game modes. Sprint, quick and easy gameplay. Grand Prix, full rules. Maybe even tell me the times on there as well. That'd be nice. So this is like 30 to 45 minutes, and this is the 45 to 90, or whatever it may be. Probably, four, yeah, whatever. Uh, so we got the big thing, available languages, why back now, back in the first 24 hours to get alternative SC miniature. Well, if I can't do that, get rid of that, please. Only with Kickstarter order, you will get a free full grid add-on. Don't know what that means, hopefully you tell me pretty soon. Get Kickstarter exclusive availables on the Kickstarter only, okay? This might be your only chance to buy the game. So standard price, we don't beat around the bush, we get straight to the price. This already annoys me. We, we, we're don't, we, we don't have it in dollars, because most of the time, United States of America, yep, is the primary backers. So just convert it. Make it simple. And yes, I know they can go over here. They can look at it as well. But look from the mobile perspective. And a huge chunk of people on Kickstarter use mobile. And you're essentially making them make an extra click. Whereas all you have to do is just say $75. Well, that converts real nice and tidy over to $85 US. Uh, simple is always better. Agreed. 
So, uh, track tiles. 68 track tiles. And I think this is where you really should show me all of these little... I want to see the 68 track tiles. I want to see the variety. I want to see the shape. I want to see you zoomed in. I want to see if there's intricate little details on this. Because I remember the table appeal looks solid. And I think that I would, I would have that here. And so you're also getting... The full grid. What is this? This is uh, this is confusing. Okay, so we're getting an expansion from the ground up. Oh, is this what you're talking about? The full grid thing? We get full grid. Only with Kickstarter order will you get a full grid add-on. Okay. Cool. So it's like we're getting an extra expansion for free. Neato. I'm understanding it now. Uh, I think it could be said in a slightly clearer way. Six sets of player components. Six car miniatures, one safety car miniature, six player boards. ER so and I think this is once again just a misstep not having the zoomed in components here. So I can see those gorgeous components because those were really nice looking components and it had great table appeal, and I think not mentioning not spotlighting that here is a misstep. You know, we've been zoomed out too much. Too much, too much zooming out. Main image it was okay, because I understood you were trying to convey the size of the board. But now I want to I want to see the details. Ten solo bot tactics required for solo. So that's cool. It sounds like maybe you'll even be able to play that uh, not with solo. Because this is kind of is this like an AI racer that I could add into a two or three player game? If that's the case, I would totally mention it here. And once again, what is this? What are bot tactics? What are these? Are these cards? I'd like to see what these cards look like. You know, you're trying to get me right now to spend eighty five dollars. That is a premium price point for a game. $60 is an SRP, so we're at $85, plus we got the shipping, which means we're probably getting up into the $100 range, and I'm not feeling $100 from you shooting me a lot of text here and some zoomed-out images of a racetrack. That's a big ask. Uh, so I think this area could really use some work. So, content. Oh, and now here it is. So it's down here, I think it should, but I think it should be just put together. Why do the separates? Content, player board, because, yeah, this is, looks great. The minis... Cool, 240 millimeters. Hit me with some inches. Hit me with some inches one time, because once again, United States of America, 90, and we're stupid. We still use it. Uh, three tire wear bonus tokens, uh, special OT tokens. Now, this is good. I kind of, and now we're looking at, oh, so this is everybody's, what is this? Gear ratings, tire, per, oh, this is everybody's board. So showcase me everybody's board. Safety car miniature plus event card. Yeah, this is what I, oh my gosh, this is the first time we've seen a card. Mm-hmm. First time we've seen a card, and this is a doozy of a card. There's a lot of text here. There's symbology. There's things here. There's this. There's that. There's, this gets me excited as a board gamer. I'm like, oh, hell, what's the safety card do? Uh, so now, oh, now, okay, yeah, we. I think we need to combine this, well, not this area. That area is kind of weird. This area with that top area in some way, shape, or form, because this is good. Now you're showcasing me the, the, the length of the components. Granted, give me some inches. Uh, and, and the different shapes and the variety, and I love that. Then we got racetrack proposals. We'll add more soon. So Hungary, uh, I'm assuming this means that it will be a specific racetrack in Hungary that you can recreate, so they're going to be able to allow you to put that. And that's cool. I don't know if it takes precedence over the rest of the components that I want to see. You know, seeing that, but, but it is cool. I will say, I think this definitely deserves a spot on the page. I don't know if it's this high. Sample dimensions, so it's the set, the centimeters. I don't know. I want to be impressed, but the, I don't know. Seventy-four action cards. Okay, can we zoom in on those just a smidge bit more? I see a lot of text. I see not a lot of text. I see a lot of symbology on this, which hopefully means we got a fantastic player reference cards. Hopefully, we see that. And this, yeah, this is a good deal of text on these cards. Different artwork, different variety. Twenty events, seventy-four actions. So we're up to ninety-four cards, uh, one hundred fourteen cards, one hundred nineteen cards, one hundred twenty-nine cards. We're at one hundred twenty-nine cards for a hundred. Probably a hundred plus dollar game when we get to shipping. That's a big ask. That's a there's a lot of you're asking a lot for. I don't think. Uh, yeah, I think the price is a bit high. At least for the perceived value that I'm getting right now. Because I look at this and I say, aside from the big tiles, the big race tracks and the little mini cars. But honestly, with mini cars, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not feeling it yet. But here we go. We got more. Plus, all unlock stretch goals. Oh, so this is the first time we're mentioning stretch goals. I think that's a misstep. I'm 15 minutes into this campaign and I have it. I'm just now finding out about stretch goals. I would mention, like, once again, I go back to this this main description. I think uh, maybe you mentioned that you're hitting stretch goals. Oh, that you have stretch goals. Oh, oh, never mind. Take backsies. You're not funded yet. I completely forgot. Uh, so I, I would still tease at the fact that there will be stretch goals at some way, at some point in there. 
It's just nice to let people know. 10 bot car strategy cards allows to play solo. And yeah, look at this. Those look good. Those look good. And it's like, why not? So it was a bad first impression the first time I looked at it. But now that I get to here, it's a, it could be a good first impression. I think they need to mush those two together. Because this is a long, great, sexy scrolling shot. Kickstarter exclusive and add-ons for free. Okay. Game includes expansions that you get for free only with your Kickstarter order. So this is also stuff we're getting, which is going into the $85 value, which, once again, okay, I'm refreshing my memory. Yeah, we're getting a game plus an expansion. So now $85 is becoming live, because $60 MSRP, $25 for an expansion. My brain says, yeah, that sounds good. That sounds fine. And all of a sudden, price point not a concern to me. I think it could be conveyed a little bit better. Uh, so the fastest lap board. So this is team markers, tokens, full grid, free add-on, four player boards. I don't know what the hell this is, but this... Boy, howdy! That right there just gave me, um, just gave me that eighty-five dollar feeling good. All of a sudden, eighty-five dollars. I say, okay, I'm getting a game. I'm getting expansion. This seems legit. This seems normal. Uh, is the full re grid required to play it though? Is the full grid required to play it though? Uh, no, I couldn't. No, it wouldn't. It would have to not be because this is just going to be something that they'll be able to buy afterwards. It just seems kind of odd. I don't know. It's just the way that odd they phrased it. So this is just an expansion, pretty much. Check how to move the car and how to play cards in the easier sprint game mode, the ERS in management. So what is this? This is a tutorial? 37 wow, minutes. Amazing. That's a pretty long tutorial. I mean, it's there, and it's good, which is great. But if you're saying this is ages 9+, I plus, I... you know, I just have a hard time. Imagine I would use this with my 9-year-old, my 8-year-old. Sorry, he's not 9 until uh, 2 months from now. With a 37-minute how to play. I mean, he did it for Gloomhaven. But Gloomhaven was, was you know, Gloomhaven's Gloomhaven. I don't know. But that's great that it's there, though. I will say that. Fantastic. Movement rules of Grid Grand Prix mode. First, we recommend to check easier sprint mode. So this is the so this is the easier sprint mode. And so how much? So this is 24. So presumably, you would then have to watch both of these. So you're now looking at an hour and one minute tutorial video. That's, that's that's pretty lengthy. I mean, it's, you know, tons of people do the long-form tutorials. Not my cup of tea, personally. So having it here is spectacular. And so I guess, no, I don't, I don't have any issues with that. If you really want to get in the weeds, there you go. The battle on the track is the essential of racing. In this video, we are demonstrating the battle rules of sprint and grand P mode. So this is another one I have to watch. Hi. It's 42 minutes. Holy. So now we're up to an hour and 42 minutes. What is this? And this is if I want to play solo. The battle on the track is the essential of racing. In this video, we are demonstrating the battle rules of sprint and grand prix. Wait. Oh, so I have to watch all of this in order to play this. So, to put this in perspective, if you wanted to sit down and watch these tutorial videos to learn the sprint mode, which is the simple mode, you would have to watch it for 79 minutes. And if you wanted to learn the grand prix mode, presumably you would have to sit here for roughly two hours. That is a big ask. You know, I, I'm pretty sure the Twilight Imperium, the, uh, what is it, the um, the Fantasy Flights game one, where they taught what uh, Game of Thrones w was shorter than that. that like, that's a, that's a big ask. Like, I love the fact these are videos are here, but hopefully there's some more that are more concise. Uh, so this is the solo now. We want to play solo. Right. That's an hour. Okay. Video in progress. GP mode requires to make a move with specific type Pit stops three. So what is this? Uh, so this is just telling me stuff about the solo mode. Okay. Okay. What I'm trying to think of what I want right now. Do I want it? Yeah. Yeah, I think it looks pretty cool. Can you do it? Um, it's first created, zero backed. I see a lot of things I like. I see a lot. Of, I see some things I don't like, but I feel overall pretty comfortable-ish. You know, I think I think they're biting. They're taking off a big bite here, and you need to realize that as well. Because this is a first-time company, and they're not just like, we're not just making the board game, we're making the board game, and we're making the expansion. Which also puts into play that $90,000 stretch goal. And the $90,000 funding goal, which I talked about at the beginning of the game, uh, the video, because that's a high funding goal. Typically, when you get to $48,000, most games are funded at this point, and we're only halfway. And and I think that, that could partially be why. And no, no, it's, it's not just that. So they're essentially just saying... We're going to make this game plus two expansions. 
Wait, so the rookie pledge. What's the what was the, oh man, okay. So this gets us everything. Oh, so this gets us oh come on, scroll over here. This gets us the track expansion. Did we see the track expansion? I don't think we saw the track expansion. We haven't seen the track expansion. Okay. I feel like this is a bit of a misstep as well. I was under the presumption that that $78 level was the level. The level that I was supposed to get. And you focused on it. And then you talked about videos and stuff like that. And now I feel like you're just kind of springing this on me. So, that, oh, there's also a track expansion. Okay. Oh, and there's also a neoprene mat plus track expansion. And typically, I think, uh, typically, if you have a big whale pledge like this, this should be your most popular pledge level. I'm going to make a bold prediction and say, well, I think this will be the most popular pledge level. I don't think it will be by an overwhelming number, where, which is most of the time that's what it is. Sometimes it's like 9, 10, 11, 20 to 1. Sounds like they're biting off more than they can chew. Yes, yes, I would agree. You know, this is not a game. This is a game of two ins they're, they're They're like, we're, we're hitting the ground running, which is ambitious. But if, if it doesn't work, I think you got to scale it back. So let's check out the pledge levels and see what are the most popular. So the access to the pledge manager, $5. 72 people sitting on the fence. I see that. I see that. Uh, standard box, 46 people. Nobody wants it. Okay. 164 for the rookie box. This gets you, uh, this gets you the track expansion. And then... 177 for the neoprene mat so it is it, yeah it's pretty even there i said i said I, I i literally said i thought it would be the most popular but not by a wide margin and there you go 13 man i look at way too many kickstarters <laughs> all right so uh five times the retailer kind of thing nobody wants that uh i bet this one might have nope nobody's taking that one as well so now you have add-ons and so now and now we're biting off even more we have the green kit safety car an alternative safety car so this just means they're making another mini another mold another thing they're really starting to trying to start like a store here that is what i'm seeing i'm putting a kickstarter together and that is my big focus reality yeah yeah uh track expansion add on so once again i would zoom in on this a little bit more i want to see the details i want to see why i want it uh, race track examples based on track expansion add-on. So these are specific, and I do think they did this well, though. So now they're specifically saying, oh, hey, you know, if you're a big fan of the turkey race track, you'll want this because it'll unlock that. That's cool. Then the play mat, 160, 90, convert me to inches would be nice. And now we get to stretch goals. Event card extra pack. This is actually a banger of a stretch goal if we were to get there. That adds some great value to the game. Because I think there was twenty grand total, wasn't there? So that's because uh, that was one of my big issues. Was I, I just felt like the the number of cards concerned me a little bit. Dual side track tiles with night race. Oh yeah, and if we're gonna start getting dual sided tracks. Now we're talking about some expansions that real. And here's the thing: had this gotten popular, these are fantastic stretch goals right here. And at ten k a piece, imagine if this was at like two hundred and fifty, three hundred thousand dollars. This would just be such the, a really fun stretch goal area to go through. But unfortunately, they didn't get there. And I don't, I, it doesn't look like they're going to get there, barring some sort of, you know, big, big occurrence, which is unfortunate. Uh, and, and honestly, a lot of the stuff they have here makes me feel more comfortable with can you do it? Because you got to do a lot of, uh, actually, it makes me feel a little bit less. I don't know. I don't know. That was also Laguna Seca for their U.S. track. It's a famous, famous. I don't know anything about Formula 1, so thank you for letting me know, but this is over my head. Risk Extra Pack, 20 cards. Yeah, these are banger stretch goals. Oh, my goodness. Trick Track Expansion Add-on, Chicanes. This is, we could buy more stuff, 125, cool. Uh, because, and I, they don't have too many. Like I've seen sometimes where they haven't hit their funny goal, and there's still like 20 of them there, and you're like, okay, okay, bro. Settle down. Maybe show tease us with a couple of them. They did. They teased us. Those are great stretch goals. Become a race car. One of the legendary teams set up the car. Now we're talking theme. Great. Neat, I guess. I just want shipping. Brett Spiel News. Also, what's the size of the box? Have I got a firm grasp on the side of the box? Let's go back up there. Make sure I'm getting a ticket to ride size box vibe, I think. I think that's pretty obvious there. And then the expansion also large, it looks like. Maybe thinner. Yeah, I'm guessing like this is the same size as trains or automobiles, oddly enough. Um, that looks like about the other sides. Okay. And then this is a smaller box expansion. And then this is a thinner 
box expansion, but still, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'd like to know the size, but I get, I have an, a, a, a loose idea of the size. That's what I thought. Why didn't they call it that? Uh, I don't know. Reviews, Brett Spiels News. With Formula G21 GP, Ducks Games has developed a promising prototype that could give racing enthusiasts what they're looking for. A very comprehensive analog simulation of a Formula race. So, this is a this is a terrible quote to start with, I gotta say. Let's actually break it down. With Formula 21 GP, Duck Games has developed a promising prototype that could give racing enthusiasts what they're looking for. So this game might be good. I don't feel like that's the quote you lead with. Uh, great fusion with Flamme Rouge, Formula D, and Rallyman GT. Great fusion. Great great fusion with Flamme Rouge. Does that mean it's kind of like those, or it would be a great in addition with those? I'm not quite understanding that one. It's very dynamic. In my opinion, it's a game which found the right balance to experience racing and give fun. Okay, cool. I don't, I don't mind that one. I'd like to know a little bit more. Uh, Dream Come True, the racing that game that I that I ever fi wanted finally at hand. Easy and simple, challenging and immersive, but awful good. Okay, that's solid. So this is the review. English, excellent. The right synthesis between dynamism and simulation. Okay, you've hammered that point pretty hard. How about we hear a little bit more about the gameplay elements of it? Uh, about all these moving parts, about these moving pieces. I don't like the fact we're really hammering hard on that particular aspect of it. Formula 20P is the second game and first that we are bringing to the international market. Is, okay, a previous project, Triang Wars, taught us a lot and we're going to use experience to bring you the best product in the highest quality of the game. Now, is this a, uh, was this a Kickstarter? Triang Wars. Triang Wars. Uh, game. Board game. Let's check it out on Board Game Geek. Let's see what the rating is. Always important to check. 6.6. .6. So it is... Okay. Nobody's setting it on fire or anything. How many how many reviews does this have? Does it have any reviews? Does it have any... How many people? One rating. So one rating. One person played it and they said it was... Okay. So we can't really read too much off that one. <laughs> okay. So they've developed a game before. Dot, dot, dot. No real information on that. Proven global manufacturing... Uh, which is about being breast product. Pro proven global manufacturing and logistics partners will be assisting acetating. So that's a misspelling. Us with the production and fulfillment. And I know there was a quote up there where there was like a, a space that should have been there. I forgot to mention it, but it's, you know, I figure if it's zeros, you might, you might want to know that. Go fix it. A big majority of the game is already done. We have stretch goals prepared and we play tested expansions and new ideas. We have a realistic, well prepared plan on delivering the game to our backers. So it's going to be. That's a pretty quick turnaround. So you're saying Gen Con ish release and. That, I think that's probably the goal right there, you know? Um, okay. First delivery to backers. That's a very quick turnaround time. I'd like to know more about your manufacturing. Shipments. Please note that shipping costs are not included in any pledge. Those will be charged in the play budget after. Below is a table for estimated shipping costs. Prices are not final and might change. Can be lower depending on current situation in the transport. The shipping costs shown at the dead. Just give me the vat. You can set up shipping costs if you purchase group order, which five copies. However, be aware that it may be occur. Uh, the project is US, UK, EU, USA, Australia, Canada friendly. For those countries, we'll cover customs charge where applicable. We won't charge additional VAT in the pledge manager. So I think that's good. I think that means you're not getting jacked by the VAT. That's good to know. This looks clean and clear. Uh, 10 euros to United States of America. And, ooh, so shipping price. Oh, man. So, yeah, that is uh, abysmal shipping. And you're not even doing me the courtesy of... Uh, you know, converting the currency for me when you're when you're punching me right in the right in the gonads, because um, <laughs> that let me see. So thirty five seventy five. That's like okay. So now USA is the one getting jacked here, and so roll reversal. And I know all the international people are loving it because typically it's them getting jammed, and now it's us. That is really abysmal shipping. Um, you need to find a way to do this better because once again, despite that abysmal shipping. We're still, we're still the most prevalent people here. Which means if this was not, because now what we're looking at here is if I just get, you know, let's get the game and we want the extra tracks. 
or just the game, just the game, because it looks decent, 46 So that's now $130, and I did not feel a $130 premium feel from this. So maybe see if you can find someone in the United States who could be like an international shipping hub, quartermaster logistics, something like that. Yeah, 35 euros to the USA. What indeed? <laughs> uh, so that, but you're not getting jacked by the VAT, so that's good. We are Duck Games, a board game publisher founded in Pilot Poland. We are designing our own games with passion to raise topics strongly on feedback and support. You out of your data privacy, don't care. Per personal date, I don't, I don't. Okay, cool, whatevs, great, get out. Okay. Let's check out the FAQ, the updates, the comments. And here's the bottom line. This is going to be a really hard sell for a lot of different reasons. First and foremost, you're asking $90,000. And it's very obvious that you don't need $90,000. It would not cost you $90,000 to make this game. You are making additional expansions and boxes and things that don't need to be made. Okay? They don't need to be made right now. That's what a second juicy Kickstarter expansion is for. People get the game, they play it, it's amazing, they say, that's a spectacular, you launch with that second Kickstarter campaign, and bada boom, that's the million dollar one. We're seeing that less and less frequently, I will say, just because people are doing this strategy, though, and then essentially just starting an entire franchise with the Kickstarter. So that when they go to a convention, it's not just that they're selling a game, they're selling a game, they're selling the add-ons, we're selling this, we're selling that. You, it's just... It's great if it works, but if it doesn't work, it just is obvious why a Kickstarter is not working, I think. To be honest, as a business owner, I don't think their shipping is high enough after taxes. I was looking at $125 to send my idea to Germany and now board game. Woo! It is. That is. And why I would highly recommend looking at um, some of the Jamie Stegmeier ones where he focuses specifically on international shipping. Now, those have changed drastically, but the same basic, basic premise is you ship it to the United States of America if you have enough units, and then they ship it from there. And I, you know, I honestly, I'm out of my element here, Donnie. But I know other people do it much cheaper than 35 euros shipping from different parts of the world. So whatever they're doing, and, and by the way, if you are a Kickstarter creator from outside of the United States of America and you're doing that, put a video up. Put a video up. People watch that. People want to know the tricks. Uh, what do we got? FAQ. Oh, tell me it's organized. It's not. I hate this. So my question is the 16th question. I have to go through the other 15 questions before I get to it. Organize it. I would recommend checking out Reload from Colossal Games, how they do it. Uh, will games consist of six or ten racing cards? Six, right? Uh, I don't know. I don't even know. All right, updates. The Kickstarter race. Lap. So we got nine comments, 11 comments, six comments, 12 comments, six comments, two comments. So these are not... These are not abysmal. You know, I've seen I've seen projects with thousands of backers who are getting zero comments. So they're still getting some, so let's see how they're keeping people engaged. I would like to present our secret, a driver's card. Some of you may find some sneak peeks on the Kickstarter page, so here they are. Each driver has a unique skill and so-called stress tokens. Stress tokens can be helpful to manage the risk, but remember, no one is immune to stress all the time. If you overdo it, your driver will lose control of the car. Wow! This is a cool thing in the game that I wish I would have known about before update number 8 of your page and being on your page for the last 34 minutes. <laughs> like, this is why I feel like it's important to zoom in on components a little bit longer so I get ideas and concepts in the game like this. Let's see what the comments are. Are you going to put a name and surname to the pilots and a name and a logo to the teams, even if they are invented to give more immersion to the game? I would like that too. Maybe this. Maybe just names. The helmets would be... So here you go. This is, this is gold, Jerry. It's gold. Your people are reaching out to you and they're saying, hey, this would be cool if we could do this. And it's a super simple, easy addition that could be added into the game. You take this as your opportunity to implement this, probably in your next Kickstarter campaign, but you pay extra money, you get to name the teams. You could have your own automotive racing team. I would mention that just in a last 15 second throwaway of your video. And by the way, check out the amazing super exclusive pledge levels where you get to own your own car franchise and blah blah blah. I think that would be sold up, snatched out, gone by these diehard F1 fans who would just get tickled pink about seeing that. And that is an easy addition for you to potentially add as long as you talk to your artist. You know, that's just some extra... I, I really think that that... That is a, a genius idea right there that could get you a huge potential chunk 
of the money that you need if you still want to try and go the $90,000 route. They want it. Give it to them. Where, where, where? I've scrolled up and down, but may not see any trace of the driver's cards. I like the idea and look forward. Yeah, where, where, where? Frederick gets it. <laughs> this isn't something that should be on update number eight. It should be on your page. It's just a driver's illustration in the game description section. Oh, I see. Will the driver cards be available in the tabletop simulator version? Yep. Oh, there's a tabletop simulator version. I feel like that should be mentioned here. Try this out on tabletop simulator. Team Bauer Racing. That'd be cool. <laughs> That's great news. Looking for it. Yeah, I think so. We mentioned the. Ta so this is just people that are super excited about this project for different reasons. So you have this hardcore fan base, partially because you have a niche. Formula One racing is a niche of people. You know, if this were an NFL game, there'd be a lot of. I mean, there'd just be a lot more excitement because you have a popular hobby. Uh. I found the tabletop simulator model in the Steam Workshop and had a test game against three bots. It took some time to get comfortable with the main loop of the game. I'm not sure I got every rule right. I had a good bit of fun, though. Managing OT. Yeah, so this is this is something that should be on this page, I think, man, mentioning that you have a tabletop simulator thing. Because, uh, once again, I love the fact you have gameplay slash tutorial videos, kind of. But the fact that I have to watch for two hours if I want to know how to do the complex game. And if I don't know everything, like if I watch those whole two hours... And I don't know how to do everything. I'm going to be pissed. Like, as a gamer. Like, that's part of the reason why I hate how to play videos. Uh, because they're so dicey sometimes. Because sometimes you still have to go back to the rule book. And you're like, oh, I spent 26 minutes on this damn video. And I'm still in the rules. I hate it. Okay. Um, I'm not saying that that's what they did. But it's just that I'm, I'm, I'm on my soapbox. All right. Hi, dev team. Also learned from RF90. Please combine better cards, 3D cardboards, etc. with new modules. Having in mind quality improvements will only be reached during this campaign or being lost. New game modules can always be put as add-ons of future expansions. I'm going to ask a question, but I want to preface it by saying I've never put a project on Kickstarter, but I have pledged to five other Kickstarters. Is it possible that a $90,000 goal was a bit unrealistic and maybe $50,000 would have been more easily attainable? Why, yes, Frank, yes. Um, I have this because I recently put this to a game called Scarface 1920, which, by the way, that one did gangbusters. This pledge uh, and got 7,420 backers for something. The pledges range from 5 to 210 euros. I'm also following a project called Kingmaker Game, which also has a goal of $50,000 and has 22 days to go, but has already got 508 backers. This pledge is this project. Uh, yeah, so he's just saying it's a high number. I don't think the projects you mentioned here are necessarily good comparisons. You still don't need $90,000 because you're like, well, you do to make everything you're making, but if you just want to make your game, yeah. But they are here. This is what I want to see. Collaborator. So we have the creator here. There's no collaborators, I don't think, in this. I do not believe so. Which, you know, I always think collaborators are good. Unfortunately, this campaign is dead in the water and won't fund this time around. Agreed. Uh, I know a tremendous amount of work went into preparing for the campaign, but it's going to take even more work for a successful relaunch. You're going to need to have your ducks in a row before you relaunch, not scrambling during the campaign. That means a well-developed draft rule booklet. Wait, did we not see a rule booklet? Oh, I miss that. Thank you, Bill. Advertising on the BGG and getting prototypes out to multiple reviewers with plenty of lead time before the first day of the campaign. Also, to cut through the swirl of apparent complexity of the game, I'd recommend you include one or more cheat sheet player aids. Yes, I saw tons of symbology, and I even mentioned that. I hope I see a nice player aid card. Is there no player aid card? If I'm paying $130 for a game, I need at least one player aid card. I know several people who haven't backed this campaign because they're confused by the game's mechanics. Yeah, I don't feel like they were greatly conveyed. Having summary player aids on card stock should help perfection backers. Yeah, I also don't think an extra 30-odd grand is coming. It's a shame, but I think there's some good lessons to be learned from this, and I hope it reaches the goal next time. I, I, you, I've been following the number of backers, but certainly over the last 24 hours or so, the actual funding total has totally, actually steadily dropped. Not dramatically, uh, for the tire wear and speed, so yes. And that's exactly what I'm saying. This feels like one that could definitely be something, but I think a relaunch, some reorganizations, some focusing on some different things is totally in order. So my final grade for Formula 21 GP. Let's do it. Do I want it? Um, yeah, I, I like racing games. I do. Um, kind of. I'm not wowed. I'm not amazed, but yeah, kind of. Uh, can you do it? I don't feel super comfortable with that. You're biting off a huge chunk of the pie, which I find ambitious, but there's other things here that are like, eh, like, I see you put a lot of work into what you should do, 
but I'm still a bit concerned because I've seen lots of projects like this that bite off more than they can chew, and then they just don't happen. So that concerns me. Now, one thing I will say is your, st your stupidly high shipping actually makes me feel a little bit more comfortable with the can you do it, because if you're getting 35 euros for shipping, you know, that's 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 a huge chunk of change. If you find a cheaper way to do it, I mean, you're, you're yeah. So, eh, kind of. And then how much is it? I don't think the price is great with the shipping. So everything is a, eh. Which means I think this one is getting a ooh, Formula 21 GP. No rule booklet. Really high shipping. Uh, I didn't have, I think I'm going to give this one a D plus. I like, I like, I think this one really just needs some, I think this one just needs a touch up. I think this one definitely has the potential to be something. I think when they do relaunch this, I think it will succeed. You know, I think it'll hit over a hundred grand. Definitely. Especially if they start hitting those stretch goals. But for right now, I'm giving this one a D plus, but let me know in the comments below. What is your grade for formula 21 GP? Let me know in the comments below. And also if you enjoyed this segment, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below. Cause every time we go on a Kickstarter critique, it's a weird wild journey. I try and do as little research as possible before I get into it. And that just leads to uh, shenanigans. But as always, thanks for your time, YouTube. <laughs>